I saw what this little effort of ours mm. started doing to this space. Yeah. You know, yeah. because uh, at at the point that I got involved, like I said, it was only to get rid of the stink. Mm. But then that. Getting rid of the stink actually led to something being housed to so many different species of uh, yeah. animals. So that was something that was very intriguing to me, and yeah. I thought that you know maybe we should do more. Puttanahalli Lake is a 37-acre urban lake situated in North Bangalore in the vicinity of Yelahanka Newtown. So what's special about this lake is, even a decade back, this used to be an unregulated sewage stuff. Now it is declared as a bird reserve and has over 100, 150 species of birds sighted here. And all that in an environment pristine with clear water different varieties of vegetation, island habitats, and little to no human interference. It's a copper smith. It's a very small lake compared mm. to all the other lakes. Yeah. But the kind of activity you see at this lake is a lot more than what you see even in bigger lakes. Very populous. Yeah. Yes. Because we're giving that kind of a protected habitat, mm where they feel secure. Mm. You'll see a lot of birds actually fighting to stay here. Mm, yeah. You will see a lot of fights here between... Uh, because the real estate is so less. The lake is home to multiple migratory species of birds. Considering the location of Bangalore, this lake serves as an ideal resting spot for birds migrating from Central Asia or between Western and Eastern Ghats. While Bangalore itself is known to have over a hundred lakes, the area in and out of Yelahanka is populated by lakes that are part of the same network. Starting from Atul Lake, going downstream towards Putanahalli Lake, Yelahanka Kere, Jakkur Lake, Rachanahalli Lake, Nagavada Lake and Hebbal Lake. The channels connecting these lakes are merged with sewage drains and followed up with diversion channels around these lakes. Putanahalli Lake is situated in a mildly busy area with development underway around it. While the east side of the lake runs along the Dudaballapur main road, which is also a state highway, the north and south sides are a residential neighborhood and a bus station respectively. The west side of the lake faces some open plots of land that often sees some cattle grazing. Couple of challenges will always be there. The very good example is the fencing, what we have on the main road. Yeah. And people have also put the holdings, the bigger holdings mm. for the advertisement. Mm. Then they will put the, you know, bright lights also. Under. Yeah. So night, obviously, it will disturb the boy. You may turn to the right one. No, the grey one. Oh, he caught, it caught a fish. So these western reef herons are prominently seen in the coastal region. Yes, they do come for the inland, but they have never entered the city areas. They always try to stay out from the Bangalore, like Madiwala, sorry, not Madiwala, what's that, Hoskote Lake. Mm -hmm. There was one record which happened in 2020. The Lake Trust arranges nature walks every Sunday mornings. These are usually hosted by naturalist and equestrian Prajwal Deep and sometimes by other expert bird watchers, ornithologists or naturalists too. While these nature walks have primarily focused on birds, there is also conversations about plants in the area and insects and their significance as well. The visitors of the lake are usually residents from around Yelahanka Newtown. These nature walks help to educate regular citizens about the significance of a bird reserve and its challenges to exist in an urban landscape. Which bird was your favorite? Tell me, tell me one, give me one. I like the juvenile bird. The juvenile? Night heron. Night heron. I think the purple moor heron. Moor hen. Moor hen. So education part is always 
tricky when it comes to natural history because you mm. have too much to learn mm. but whatever i have observed whatever i have learned from here mm. that we try to tell to the people so that that triggers a spark inside them and they also start looking at you know initially when we start so no one will be interested with the birds mm. right so we can also see okay there are some colorful birds so when we start talking about from where they are migrating what are their food habits and whatever yeah. what are their my meeting habits mm. so then everyone will start looking at the bird right in the mid path you will only observe you know like everyone yeah. will be looking the tiniest bird also you know yeah. like what is that bird what is that bird okay so it's very much important for our ecosystem and their you know contribution to the ecosystem even yeah. the tiniest birds will help us in pest control mm. in seed dispersal mm. so once we start understanding it it becomes very easy to put our point of view into the people's mind mm. that you know even the birds are very much important or even the smallest insects are very much important you know i just don't touch it uh, this actually communicate the second intention for these nature walks is to constantly document the sightings of birds to maintain an archive for the same as listed on ebirds.org currently there have been 152 species sighted in the lake premises and still counting look come here you see that date palm in the center of the date palm look closely this is a nest of grey heron white throat it green fish would red blue color for me all sighting is a favorite sighting even though if it's a jungle crow or a common crow that's also my favorite sight the rare birds always excite us mm. but uh, you know every time even though if it's a same crow there are many things to learn about it might be what exactly the behavior what they are doing mm. so every even in the season wise they do the different kind of behavior very mm. frequently for example if you take parakeet mm. right very common everyone yeah. has seen it in the breeding season they'll be keep on feeding the uh, females mm. and they try to mate mm. so mating behaviors will be there the lake becoming home to so many species of birds not only includes making safe habitats like islands and planting native trees in the area for the birds to nest and roost in but also bringing back and keeping check of the water quality of the lake so that it can sustain aquatic life that can in turn sustain the avian life so the water comes in from two different sources here uh, one is the rain water uh, the rain water is collected in a rain water harvesting chamber and that in turn goes into the lake the other source is treated sewage water uh, the sewage comes in from the surrounding areas around putanali lake and this water merges in from water coming from attur lake which is upstream merged together the waters come in approaching from the southwest corner another part is that when it comes it don't go directly to the deep end hmm. it is shallow end okay that's shallow end means 0 hmm. to here 90 feet. so water when comes to shallow end it takes some time to reach the deep end hmm. at the same time there are a lot of vegetation there hmm. which will filter the water hmm. in the earlier why it was clear but sewage inlet is very small mm. and the plants which is there will take care of the sewage yeah. because the sewage increase more then really whole sewage filled up yeah, that's yeah. only reason yeah, yeah. so what we did we have a shallow end planted lot of uh, fed mm. up for this kind of bushes mm. this purification takes place mm. so even a small sewage or one ml of sewage coming in it will mm. take care of it the lake bed is not designed like other urban lakes Usually lakes are made in a bowl shape with slight slope on the side with constant depth. Putanali Lake is however designed to have a linearly sloping bed. 
so when you have a constant depth you have only some type of fish that are growing there right. and only some types of birds that come to mm. eat those some types of fish mm. but here since you know they decided that the shallow end is zero depth mm. and the deep end is 9 feet yeah so you have different types of in between also you have the reed bed where you have the purple heron mm. so yeah. this lake kind of was designed to cater to all those different habitats because of this linear depth the sewage diversion channel allows the water to gain some momentum before entering the sewage conditioning plant the entire process of sewage treatment happens due to the principles of gravity Just all the lakes in Bangalore. If you see water in them, that means it is fed by a wastewater treatment system that follows a conventional method of treating sewage. Mm. Otherwise, there is no chance of water standing there in summer. Should have evaporated it. Right. So here, what we have done is we have done something which does not require a specialist and does not require constant funding. There are three tanks there. Mm. It does the job of the, in the first tank. It removes the uh, organic material that goes into the sewage. Okay. Gets converted to a gas. Right. Okay. And so once that is removed. then the ugly part of it and the smelling part is gone mm. then what is left inside is the uh, particles the bacteria so in the second tank there are other organisms that we have arranged it in such a way that it meets the requirement of these organisms what we call euglenoids mm. which functions very close to like amoeba does goes and eats up all the bacteria and anything particulate And the water now becomes very clear. Okay, so we set the conditions there as to very suitable for them. So when they finish their task, then it goes to the third tank where <coughs> the algae starts growing. And when they grow, they make sure that unwanted nutrients, extra nutrients like nit uh, nitrogen or nitrate, uh, ammonia is thrown out. Phosphorus is precipitated. Right. and its own biomass that means the cells become food into the lake when it enters right so that's where life begins into the lake and that uh, algae is eaten up on as i said by the next group line comes and the insects and then yes okay the sewage treatment system here is a first of its kind uh, designed by dr chanakya from indian institute of science bangalore the Design principles of this system has since been used in other lakes as well. One second, did you hear that? Personally, witnessing the results of efforts to bring back certain birds, for example, the painted storks coming back to the lake as water levels were reduced to simulate a natural summer cycle, made me realize. that while simple acts of ours can ruin ecosystems simple acts can also revive ecosystems it was comforting to see now that the lake was somewhat revived into being habitable for avians much of the current efforts of conserving the lake was taking place in the form of education now that putinalli lake can be coined as a success story in terms of lake revival it will be interesting to look at what lies in the future of the lake urban lakes would always face challenges to sustain a balanced ecosystem due to human interference hence looking at at least how to maintain the current status quo of this lake if not make things even better is the current question at large
ब्लैक क्राउन नाइट है ना इधर रेड एक्टिवेट इवनिंग एंड नाइट टाइम्स तो ब्रायोफाइलम दिस प्रोड्यूसर्स अनदर प्लांट बेबी प्लांट लाइक यू राइट लेट्स टेक अ डिफरेंट पर्सपेक्टिव ओके what we are doing is there we are making them to participate mm. and get some kind of a feeling that they are also part owners of mm. so they should be pride mm. and they should be some amount of uh, what you call uh, not or but something to say that here there is a, a lot of science engineering and a thought process that is gone in let me also learn about it let me be a part and if i can contribute make it better is that when this generation disappears time always takes away a lot of people mm-hmm. who's going to run this so if i if we don't get our next generation and the next generation to say look unlike what this lake was meant say a mm. uh, 100 years back as a as a major source of water for you mm. and this was life you had respected it in various forms saying this is a source of life like right it depends on the so the custodian should be built in like now in this modern era how does one build in a like custodian ship or a stewardship into the next generation